Good evening, I'm Sophia Wensler in the GB Newsroom. Your top story this hour, a man has set himself on fire outside the courthouse in New York, where former US President Donald Trump's hush money trial is underway. The man was in the designated protest area outside the Manhattan Criminal Court. The person received medical attention and was taken from the area. The circumstances are still unclear and we will bring you more as we get it. The UK and Western allies are calling for de-escalation in the Middle East after reports that Israel launched airstrikes against Iran. State media says three drones were shot down with explosions heard at an airbase near the city of Isfahan. No damage or injuries have been reported in the latest exchange. The strike is thought to be in response to last weekend's attack when Iran fired a barrage of drones and missiles at Israel. In other news, Scotland's former First Minister has spoken for the first time since her husband was charged by police. Nicola Sturgeon was questioned by journalists as she left her home in Glasgow. It's incredibly difficult, but, you know, that's not the main issue here. So um, I can't say any more. I'm not going to say any more. Um, Peter Murrell, who was the SNP's chief executive for more than two decades before standing down last year, has been charged in connection with the embezzlement of funds. Detectives are investigating how more than £600,000 in donations for independence campaigning was spent. The 59-year-old, who is no longer in custody, has also resigned his SNP membership. The Met Police has apologised after an officer used the term openly Jewish to an anti-Semitism campaigner who was near a pro-Palestine march. A video clip posted on social media showed the moment Gideon Falter was threatened with arrest by police. You are quite openly Jewish. This is a pro-Palestinian march. I'm not accusing you of anything, but I'm worried about the reaction to your presence. The chief executive of Campaign Against Anti-Semitism was wearing a keeper skullcap when he was stopped from crossing a road near the demonstration in London last Saturday. The Met Police Assistant Commissioner said the officer's poor choice of words was hugely regrettable. And five Just Up Oil protesters have been convicted of aggravated trespass after they disturbed a performance of Les Miserables in London's West End last year. The performance was stopped when activists stormed the stage and locked themselves to the set. An audience of around 1,000 people was asked to leave the venue and the performance was cancelled. The court was told the action cost the theatre an estimated £60,000. And for the latest stories, sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or go to gbnews.com alerts. Now it's back to Mark. If you thought the biggest problem facing the country was illegal immigration, an ongoing cost of living crisis, a broken NHS, sky high taxes, or a bloated and inefficient public sector, think again. It's no dreadful smokers you've got to worry about. That's right, whose taxes pay for our beleaguered public services. This hasn't stopped born again socialist Rishi Sunak wasting parliamentary time and annoying half his own party with a very unconservative and probably unenforceable smoking ban on people born after 2009. So when these youngsters reach adulthood, they'll be co opting people in their 90s to pop into the news agents to buy them 20 Benson and Hedges. Is it any wonder that Rishi Sunak's premiership is going up in smoke? At the fag end of 14 years, things couldn't be worse for the beleaguered PM, with yet another sorry tale of a Tory MP caught up in a compromising position. Last week, it was William Ragg, Big Willie to his friends, who inexplicably <laughs> handed out phone numbers of his Tory colleagues after he was caught sending, presumably, saucy pictures of himself to a black mainer. Blackmailer. Now, whilst focus should be on Angela Rayner's car crash in slow motion, where did I live 10 years ago drama, enter stage left another Conservative backbencher, the Lancashire MP Mark Menzies, who, according to the Times newspaper, allegedly called an assistant in the middle of the night, demanding thousands of pounds in what was called a matter of life and death to pay off bad people. Who are these bad people? Other Tory backbenchers? 
He was even allegedly locked in a flat, presumably one of the flats that we pay for. It's also alleged that £14,000 given by donors for campaign activities was transferred to Menzies' account for medical expenses. What are those medical expenses? Was it a kidney transplant, back surgery, bum lift? Menzies denies the charges and he's now lost the Tory whip. That sounds like an early punishment. I imagine he quite <laughs> likes the whip. <laughs> Let's give this poor bloke the benefit of the doubt, shall we? But it all has echoes of John Major's sleaze-ridden administration in 1997. Now, climate alarmists got very excited to see Dubai flooded with rain this week, with wild scenes of hotels and shopping centres knee-deep in water in what is basically normally an Arabian desert. Even airplanes struggled to navigate the runway. Such were the levels of flooding. Of course, predictably, this news was met with excitement and glee by net zero fanatics who will stop at nothing to stir up hysteria around climate change. Except that some have been speculating that the Dubai authorities, that's right, the Dubai authorities, have been indulging in something called cloud seeding, where they essentially plant rain into the clouds in order to bring moisture to this arid landscape. Now, if that's true, it's probably best to leave nature to its own devices. The same could be said for a certain virus laboratory in Wuhan. Mm. <laughs> Meanwhile, the climate cult will continue to seize on any unusual weather to prove that the world's going to have blown up by next Tuesday. The fact that we're all sat here shivering in April doesn't really help the climate change cause, does it? Yes, the Earth is heating up, and yes, we should clean up the planet and go green in a sensible way, with the likes of China pulling their weight. But these eco-fanatics are over the top, deluded, mad, and often wrong. They have cried wolf too many times, and all they've got now is hot air. Well, for full reaction, my Friday A-teams, Sajila Kershi, Tony Cotty and Nicholas Owen. Uh, Sajila, get the ball rolling for us. Do the Tories have a problem with sex? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've got a problem. A lot of it's to do with sex. I mean, of course, they do. They, it's something about the right, isn't it? They love their sexy time. I don't know. Mm. This, Is it because they all went to boarding school and didn't get any yeah, for about maybe 10 years? Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe not from, nan from Nanny. Yeah. Maybe nanny. Well, like they got they got spanked by the head teacher, and they got they got a taste for it. <laughs> I think there's all that stuff going on. I mean, this it's like a guy Richie like script. I mean, that, that, what, by the way, mean, that boring, was and <laughs> boring and overlong. Boring and overlong. Just boring and overlong. Sorry, guy, if you're watching, because I still want to be cast in one of your films. Um, but no, the bad <laughs> people we do, don't we, Mark? We want to be cast. But yeah, bad people. What? Who are these bad people? It's just ridiculous. It just goes on and on and on and on. Well, who's he talking about? I mean, is it Tory backbenchers? Is it the ERG? <laughs> Who could it be? The plot the thickens. Parties. It's like an Agatha Christie, isn't it? Tony Cotty, mm. you're shaking your head. Um, we deserve better politicians, don't we? Because whether it's dodgy Tories on the right or indeed Angela Rayner with questions to answer on the left, they're a bunch of wrong -uns. Sadly, Mark, I'm old enough to remember the, the last legs of the Thatcher major government mm. and all the stuff, and they kept churning out all these sex scandals and everything. Yeah. It's exactly where we are now. I think it happens at the end of a government, doesn't it? And okay. they've totally lost their way. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know where you go. I mean, I, I come from the sporting background, as you know, and, yes. you know, I, I, I watch with fascination what's going on in, in politics. I love politics, but I, I'm scratching my head. I don't understand. Well, indeed, I mean, these politicians are making Premier League stars look like angels. Yeah, which is hard to do as well, isn't it? <laughs> Because like, you know, there's somewhere some uh, past history, isn't there? You know, but they're they're all having a go at the moment, aren't they? But you know, bad people. What, what, what does that mean? Bad what people. Does it mean Tony Cotty? What this country needs, as in just like football, needs good management, doesn't it? We need yeah. we need a good gaffer at the top. Well, we do. We haven't got that at the moment, have we? Um, you know, and the argument is, are we going to get it if we well, change who, the Labour? Who is the gaffer in, in the wings? Who is the dream person to run the country like a dressing room? Who is the political equivalent of Big Sam Allardyce? <laughs> well, I thought it was Boris Johnson, but obviously oh. Boris. Boris got slaughtered as well, didn't yeah, he? So it's, right. uh, you know, if you take the managers down, then you replace them with people that aren't as good, then you have problems, which That's is where it. we are. Or Boris was more Neil Warnock than Jose Mourinho. Yeah, I think you're right, yeah. <laughs> trouble with Neil Warnock now. I'm a brave man. Uh, Nicholas, this is a big old headache for the Tories, isn't it? And, uh, of yeah. course, the focus should arguably be Angela Rayner because she's a, a front bench shadow person and she'll be the deputy prime minister if and when Labour win. Mm. But we're not talking about Angela now. We're talking about... 
another Conservative. Yes, the Tories banging away about uh, Angela and they're trying to get something. And banging away. <laughs> <by> <laughs> <third>. <laughs> I'm oh, glad you beat me to it. I, say, when I we bowl Nicholas... them down and you <laughs> bat them back. When we, when, we, when, we, when we booked Nicholas Owen, I had no idea he was so rude. Yes, <laughs> so, but, yes exactly. I mean, this is, this is great news for Keir Starmer this week. Well, yes, I suppose it is. But, you know, one thing that strikes me, how many MPs are there? Is it 450, I think it 650. is? 650. 650, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Very high proportion of them do seem to be in trouble of various sorts, mm -hmm. don't they? Which is crazy. I don't know what the population as a whole... I yeah. mean, how many people are in prison as a proportion of the whole population? How many people are sort of, you know, in terrible mental turmoil and so on? But politicians do seem to be rather more than the average. But this goes back as far as you like. When do you want to start? I mean, back in the 18th century, 19th century... It's always been the case that, for some reason, politics attracts people who are... I don't know, they love danger, is it? Danger? Yeah, Something yeah. Like adrenaline that. junkies, yeah. risk-takers. Yeah, and it's all very well if you then rise up to the top where it's all mm. adrenaline, it's all, you know... But if you're left behind on the back benches, actually, I think it must be a pretty dreary and ghastly I think life. A, I think a lot of them like their own ego, to be honest with you. And well, they're exactly. elected by us. We elect them to do the right things, and they're too busy worrying about their egos and trying to get into cabinets. Yeah, but and... we're electing egos. We elect based yeah, on Yeah, but there's not much choice, is there? There isn't. At the no, moment, it's not really much dire. Choice. Yeah. It's not great, is it? Uh, Tony, let's talk about Dubai. Yeah. Is it the new Manchester? They've had more rain than the <laughs> northwest this week. You've probably played in Manchester, I'm sure you have. Yes, you and have. many times, yeah. 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 So and I got make... married in Dubai as well, did Mark. Did you really? Yes, I did, yeah. All right. yeah. And was it, a, was it a rare... It wasn't something? raining. It was definitely wasn't raining. I think we all go to Dubai to get the guaranteed sunshine. But yeah. you, know, you mentioned about the, the seeding there. They, I, they, I think I'm right in saying they do it for the Dubai Cup, which is the horse racing event that's right. out there, yeah. to try and get a little bit more give in the ground for the horses. That's why they do it. Yeah. But, of course, if it's... Creating situations like that. I mean, that was horrific. They, you know, I've got friends that were out there. They said it was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, some people are saying it's a conspiracy theory about the cloud seeding, and a lot of people are pointing to climate change. But my point, Tony Cotty, mm. is that the eco fanatics will take any unusual weather and call it climate change. Yeah, but that's what they do, don't they? They love events like this, don't they? Now, you know, the world's getting hot and we all this and the temperature rising well. and everything. But, you know, we've, we've got to deal with it. I think it's, it's just that we're, we know, we, we're, we're all at fault for what's going on. The, the world has got hotter, mm -hmm. and we're well, going to get more disasters like this. The world gets warmer, it gets wetter. There's no doubt yeah. about that, I'm yeah. afraid. Mm. You can't get round that point. You cannot I, get round... No. Which is exactly what we are suffering, yeah. actually. Yeah. So do you think, do you think Dubai is going to have to do what Blackpool did then and just have, like, amusement arcades and things like that? Betting shops? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to need some <laughs> weather spoons in a hurry? <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah maybe. Some, some indoor swimming pools, maybe table tennis? <laughs> it's going to be a very different vibe, isn't it? It's going to be like Margate. Yes. Yeah. Margate's not, all right. Margate's yeah. jolly good, enough. And it's not £10 a that. beer down at Margate. <laughs> no. Oh, that's Sadly not. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Now, listen, while you think about the climate cult because I know you're pretty green in I your outlook green, but yeah. have you not noticed how the sort of the extremists will just you know there's a spot of rain bang there's your climate change well, the, the thing is I did read this story and I thought oh it's climate see it's climate change in Dubai and then when I saw the seeding thing I thought oh, hang on a minute are they doing a seeding thing in England? Because we get a lot of rain. <laughs> yeah, they've been We're doing it for, for 300 years. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. What it's, that's been happening. We've been seeding for years. Yeah. By the way, I think that Dubai need a bit of bad weather because it's very hot there and it's very sunny. And whenever I've been for work, you spend most of your time hiding in the hotel yeah. because of the air con. Yeah. It's no yeah. fun, is it? Or, or the uh, swimming pool. <laughs> well, it cools you down, doesn't it? Maybe the rain, the seeding, is to fill the swimming pools. All the little hotel swimming pools. Yeah. Maybe they yeah. That's the worst rain they've had since 1949, I think. So maybe it is just the one-off. Uh, yeah. well, that's maybe, the thing. You call it maybe. climate change, yeah. but they had it 75 years ago. Yeah. Mm. So was the climate changing 75 years ago? I mean, the point is that the climate always No one spoke about Tony climate Cotty. change, did they? Yeah. No. Not I in mean, 1949. Did you, did you Not in 1949. The climate changed in the course of your football career? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we had lots of games called off. The pitches were awful, obviously, back in the 80s, but there was lots of heavy snow and frost. Mm -hmm. we, we just had a winter. We didn't have any snow. Well, yeah. Not where I was in Essex, anyway, but... Yeah, well, there you go. Well, look, I'll tell you something, folks. Uh, a big debating point, and it's going to rage on, let me tell you. But next up in what is a busy show... Are are sex attacks uh, unacceptable? Yes, they are. We'll discuss that. Plus, as the dusty House of Lords block the Rwanda plan for the third time, is this proof that old people shouldn't be allowed to vote? We'll debate that next. Plus, what about those lefties having a go at Liz Truss? I'll be dealing with them in no uncertain terms in two minutes' time. is GB News, Britain's news channel.
In every corner of the world, people celebrate English tradition and values as members of the Royal Society of St George. Yet here in England, branches are closing as membership dwindles. I feel that in this country, St George is all but dead and buried. Until recently, Stephen Warden from Wigston was president of the Leicestershire branch. Despite spending £1,500 of his own money advertising, he couldn't find enough members to keep it running. I did everything humanly possible to get new members into the branch from the local environment, but they were just not interested in joining. He thinks changing demographics and declining interest in the society's values contributed to disappearing membership. But he also blames political leadership at national and local levels. Stephen claims his proposal for a St George's Day parade was repeatedly rejected by Leicester City Council over 10 years. A celebration is planned for St George's Day, but like most cities and towns, no parade will pass through the streets. A Leicester City Council spokesperson said, Leicester's annual celebrations of St George's Day have been organised and funded by the City Council for many decades and they remain an important part of the city's festival calendar. Some in Leicester say they would like to see more done to celebrate England's patron saint. I think it's a sign of patriotism. I think it helps the country. We celebrate a lot of religious festivals here. People forget, I think, uh, what is important to England. Maybe it's been sort of... Um, jumped onto with the wrong crowd, but I think nowadays it's just completely different. Back in Wigston, St George's Cross flies above Stephen's home. It makes me feel good because I know at least I've not forgotten St George if everybody else has. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And why it matters to you. From your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. Good afternoon, Britain. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Liz Truss has a book out in 10 years to save the West. She says the deep state is thwarting the democratic will of the people, conniving to give us open borders, keep taxes high and allow woke nonsense like gender ideology to embed in our public institutions. Lots of arrogant male commentators have been sneering at what she had to say in a way that I think is a touch sexist. Meanwhile, the rest of us are just wondering what this radical woman might have actually achieved if she'd been given more than 44 days. Yes, she cut a comical figure at times, but that's nothing compared to the clowns that will be running the country in a few <laughs> months' time. <laughs> so Gila Kershi, Tony Cotty and Nicholas Owen are my Friday A-team. Nicholas Owen, I think there's sexism at play here. I don't like the beating up on Liz Truss. What do you think? Uh, there is an aspect of that, yes. I mean, I think that the, the Liz Truss is this. Isn't it? She got there, she had radical, very, very radical ideas, wanted a tax cut, tax cuts, get people back into work and all the things that we talk about. All jolly good ideas. Uh, appallingly executed. I mean, that's mm, what happened, wasn't correct. it? I don't think it's sexism, really. No, I don't think so. I just think she was um, just couldn't put it over, just couldn't uh, turn it into reality. That was the trouble. But is she the best prime minister we never had? Do you think that Rishi Sunak should use her as some kind of political resource? Should she go back in the cabinet? That would put a cat among the pigeons. Yeah, I don't think. I, the, the game she's playing is quite clear, isn't it? She wants expecting Sunak to be off. He goes mm. off and continues making money in the way that he did before, which is fine. Jolly good. Good for him. And the tiny rump of the Tory party. Rump again? Rump? 
Oh, I mean, you missed one. You missed one. I got one past him. I got one past him. The Remember the Tory party? Will be family the... show, Nicholas. Yes. Yes. Oh, is it? Oh, it's turned into a family show now. <laughs> Better late than never. What time is it? Oh, yes, it is. Anyway, um, uh, it, the, the, the small amount of the Tory party that's left will be looking for a new leader, will it not? And yeah. it might just be there are enough um, uh, headbangers of one sort or another on the right uh, who will say, well, why don't we have a go with Miss Truss? There's a thought, isn't it? Oh, my God. Bring back Truss. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. I think she should have... She Second coming. Trick. She missed a trick with her book. I think she should have called it Letters from Number 10. That's Play a bit word. harsh. Uh, oh, OK. Uh, look, I'm sorry, but you are in that position, so you kind of, like, um, have to expect it. I, I don't think it's sexism. And for a woman, for me to say that, I mean, I don't think it is. I, don't think, it I think it's justified, no. the criticism that she's getting. I think it sounds like... I haven't read the book, but I'd like to. Um, but from what I've read, it sounds like there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of this, so-and-so did this, like, you know... Well, well she's, been, she's a laughing stock among certain sort of male commentators. But the truth is, she was thwarted by the blob. <laughs> so she wasn't... Blob. She she wasn't good. She wasn't good. Like, I mean, you know, it, it, I don't think it's unjustified what people are saying. Mm. She didn't do her job. She wasn't like a leader. You said you wanted a strong leader. She was not a strong leader. Tony you, Conti, right? You, you are a, a former top footballer, OK? And the way I see Liz Truss, she was mm. a top quality manager mm. thwarted by the board. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't open the checkbook. I, I think Nicholas was right. I, I think some Always. of her some of her ideas were good, that. but just at the wrong time. You know, mm. the, when she was thrown in at the deep end and that. You know, it was just just chaos, wasn't when, it? When, but, when, not, when, when will her ideas be the right ideas? Do you think? Well, I don't think After she'll the get apocalypse. Yeah, she won't get the chance of her ideas. I mean, you said about being the, the next leader. I can't see that in a million years. You yeah. know, the, the, the Tories just need to go back to basics, yeah. which is what happens if you get relegated in football. You clear out all the dead wood and then you okay. rise again. Just and that's what they've got to do. She loves this phrase, deep state, doesn't she? Yes, she does, yeah. That's what she left the country in, has to be said. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, uh, Very good, what, Nicholas. That's Very than good. Any of my <laughs> Sack the writers. Uh, those old grey duffers in the House of Lords have blocked the Rwanda plan for the third time, demonstrating how out of touch this dusty second chamber is with British public opinion. And it shows they've forgotten how democracy works by thwarting the will of our main elected chamber. Most of the media don't get it. The political elite don't get it. The blob who run our public institutions, they don't get it. The public want to stop the boats. The Rwanda plan may be expensive, it may be flawed, it may never work, but it's the only serious option on the table. Anyone against it is effectively waving the white flag and accepting open borders. Maybe they, the House of Lords, should all go and live in Rwanda instead. And we can live in a country that decides who comes in and who comes out. I know, crazy idea. It'll never catch on. Meanwhile, there is great speculation as to which airline will run the long-awaited flights to Rwanda. The national carrier of Rwanda has passed on the opportunity for fear of reputational damage. The RAF is an option too, but we own the planes. That's not bad. It's still expensive to do so. The last option... The nuclear option <laughs> is Ryanair. <laughs> but I think we can all agree that would be just plain <laughs> cruel. Uh, Sajila Kershi, Tony Cotty and Nicholas Owen. Where do you start with this one? Sajila, the public want to stop the boats. The House of Lords are out of touch. I think it's hilarious that they voted the first time round and it was, what, 37 votes. Mm. Second time, 52 opposed. <laughs> and if you keep doing this, it's going to be 100% are going to be opposing. Rwanda was never going to work. I'm sorry, I know you're pro-Rwanda. I'm not. Well, no, I what I am rubbish. is I'm pro stopping the boats. Stopping the boats. And I but think that in the absence there, of Rwanda, but... there's no serious other plan. That's They're, my point. But yeah, but what, because it's, a, it's the only plan we should go with it. I, it's, it's so not going to work. It was something that Priti Patel... Like, you know when you've got to hand in your project and you're late and you just think, hand in something rather than nothing at all. And that's what Rwanda was. Hand in something, give something, and then we can all dream about Rwanda. Meanwhile, nothing is being done by politicians to stop the boat. What's the other option, though, Sajila? That's the thing, isn't it? Well, yeah. no one's coming up with another option. No, because but, but there's got to be Rwanda. an option, hasn't it? We can't just say, well, Rwanda's not going to work, which it's not, and we all know that. What is the what alternative? Is the alternative? If it's not going to work, why are we still going to go there? It's like, well, you know what? We could behead people to stop them from doing... Well, we, this, could, this we could close our borders. 
The borders are open because... No, but no, no, properly close the borders. If we close the borders... This government is the reason... Yeah, no, I agree, I agree, I agree. To close our Yeah, that's why we all voted for it, I know. But they've never been more open. It's Brexit has not been implemented properly, has it? The people that voted for Brexit, myself included... So who's to blame for that, then? Tory government. Tory government. Absolutely. We're we're agreeing on it. Exactly. But there's no alternative, is there? Do you want to be referee here? Yeah. Well, I was more interested in what you had to say about old people not being allowed to vote. What was all this about? Well, the thing is, I'm not worried about you, because you're about 50. One, by the looks well, of it. Yeah, okay. Not far out. You, you are the Peter Pan good. of yeah. news broadcasting. <laughs> uh, but I think that the House of Lords are out of touch with the public. I think that that whole building should be repurposed as a care home for the elderly. Okay? <laughs> Do us all a favour yeah. so we can get on with having the will of the people. I, th- um, I agree. Listen, I agree with absolutely with you, Nadia. This this whole plan is absolutely daft. Let's be honest. Mm. It is the only plan on the table, but that's no argument for trying to push it through. No. Who the devil is actually going to send anyone back to Rwanda? Is anybody ever going to go back to Rwanda? If you go out on the streets and ask the public that question, rea- in reality, what are they going to say? Nah, mm, I suppose you're right. I suppose you're right. It doesn't work. The only way this thing is get some sort of control over immigration is to have some sort of Europe-wide cooperation. Don't think Brexit helped that very much. <laughs> Europe-wide no. cooperation. <laughs> You've been on the cooking sherry again, Nicola. Oh, Owen. yeah, I know. Well, to come on this show, I have to be. <laughs> what, about, what about, Tony, the over-80s? Time to take the vote off them. They've got no sense. I mean, look at the House of Lords. I think we should get rid of the House of Laws. I don't understand the House of Laws. Again, you've got the Houses of Parliament. Why do you need the Houses of Laws? That's exactly I don't get it. it. It's a mockery, get it. isn't it? We need someone to they... lord it about. Yeah, well, let's get some proper people to do it, not people, unelected people, or they're just baronesses and sirs and all that. The they, you know, what, 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 what right have they got to do it? liberals like you... <laughs> Only like the House of Lords when you agree with their verdict. I, and when I you don't, proud. you want to scrap it. You I can't have it both ways. I'm proud of being a bleeding heart liberal, yes. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on, I say. But your crowd love the House of Lords when it agrees with them and want to scrap yeah, it when it doesn't. On, we're, we're, we're all the same. We're all the same. <laughs> no one's different. The left, the right. Double we, standards. We cherry pick. We cherry pick, right? We all do. I own it. Never. <laughs> uh, listen, lots more to come. Let me tell you another howler from the BBC. You won't believe it. And yes, It's costing us millions. And as they try to lure back young Brits, is the EU behaving like a crazy ex-girlfriend? You're watching Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan on GB News, Britain's news channel. We'll be dealing with the BBC next. Hi there and welcome to the latest update from the Met Office for GB News. Skies clearing overnight, most places fine as we start the weekend with high pressure in charge. That high pressure moving in from the west. Still a bit of a chilly breeze from the north, but as high pressure moves in, skies are going to clear, winds are going to ease, and under lengthy clear skies and with light winds, temperatures will fall away. A few mist and fog patches possible for the likes of Northern Ireland and some frosty conditions as we begin the weekend. So gardeners beware, temperatures in urban areas 3 to 5 Celsius, but as low as minus 3 for the likes of Northern Ireland, North West England and North Wales. Temperatures though through Saturday morning will quickly rise because of the widespread sunny skies and it stays sunny towards the south and the west for much of the afternoon. However, it tends to turn cloudier further north with some outbreaks of light rain moving into northern Scotland where it will be fairly chilly and we've still got that breeze down the North Sea coast making it feel on the cool side. Warm in the sunshine elsewhere and another sunny day to come for Northern Ireland, parts of southwest Scotland, West Wales and southwest England on Sunday. Bright skies also into the southeast. Elsewhere, increasingly low cloud and some patchy rain and drizzle for Northern England and eastern Scotland. Monday brings further cloudy skies for many with some patchy rain, but it stays relatively cool. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other, which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels 
we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria De Piero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. We're GB News, and we come from a proud tradition of British journalism. That's why I'm so excited to be here. It's something so new. The first news channel to be launched in Britain in over 30 years. Launched to represent the views of the British people. To go where other broadcasters refuse to go. How did you find out about the story in the first place? Launched with one aim. To be the fearless champion of Britain. It's an absolutely fantastic atmosphere here. This is GB News. The GB News, Britain's news channel. In the belfry. Good. <laughs> There's trouble in paradise, folks. BBC newsreader Martine Croxall <coughs> is taking legal action against the corporation for age and sex discrimination as she's been off TV for the best part of a year. But in classic BBC style, she has been on full pay throughout that time, just like Hugh Edwards, who has made almost half a million pounds for doing nothing. You can't really call the BBC the British Broadcasting Corporation anymore, can you? Because most of its stars aren't broadcasting at all. Nice work if you can get it. With me tonight, my Friday A-team, Sajila Kershi, Tony Cotty and ex-BBC star Nicholas Owen. Mm. Nicholas, mm. how do you solve a problem like the BBC? So you've got this brilliant mm. presenter, Martine Croxall, yes. probably a friend of yours. I do know Martine very well. Yes. She's, she's, yes. she's got her chops, hasn't she, as, as a presenter? Yeah, I mean, they were seeking to cut back, as happens uh, so much at the moment, because the BBC under, you know, under attack from people who think the licence fees are an outrage and all that sort of thing. Mm. Um, but no, the costs are bearing down on them very, very hard. They've been cutting back on their output, and so some people have not been getting the work they want uh, and that's very very sad i don't know the details of martin's case no and I of course it's honest it's ill-advised for us to actually uh, enter that particular case we wish yeah. her well the bbc yeah. and and her will flesh that one out yes but i don't like the optics of these stars on full pay at our expense i mean you've got hugh edwards who i was talking about on sunday night in my take at 10 yes about three hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds earned since he came off air yes well contract is a contract i'm afraid mark isn't it mm. uh, uh, I don't know what the wording of the contract is, his contract is, what his deal is, but that's the, the way it goes. He's not alone in that. I mean, let's, let's, let's swing away from the media. Uh, uh, all sorts of businesses have been in this position where people, for one reason or another, have moved away to another job or indeed suspended. Mm. And if it says in the contract pay, that the full pay, that's what you've got to do. Otherwise, you find yourself on a legal action coming the other way, which maybe is what is happening here with Martine. I don't know. It's very sad. Martine is a great broadcaster. I'm not just saying that because I know her well but uh, she really is a good broadcaster. The, the Beeb, I hope you don't mind me saying this, dear old BBC, not a very happy place these days. Mm. Uh, it's journalism is still, I think, of a very, very high order, mostly. We rely on it so much. We don't, I think we don't realise quite how much we rely on it, not just on the, mm. the basic TV stuff, the traditional stuff, but on the website and all this sort of thing. The, the BBC News website is the most visited news website in the world, including the Americans and all the other people. Uh, it's, it's sad to see it in the States. So why is the BBC a sad place to be at the moment? You're right to uh, be positive about the journalism yeah. that happens there. Uh, and I think it's a great British brand. Yeah. But why, why is it a sad place to work? Well, I think the morale... It's always been difficult. In, in, my, in my days, I was at the BBC. I was back in the early 80s, and then I went back there in the sort of early 2000s. On so. much bigger money, I yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> you came back I, in a Rolls-Royce. Can't remember, quite can't remember. Uh, actually, um, well, never mind, that's another tale. We didn't do too badly, it has to be said. But the point about it is that the, the BBC that I, I came back to was enormous amount of um, admin, 
in, people sitting in mm. committees, and all the things we all saw on W1A, you know, the, the oh, famous brilliant sitcom. The skit. Yeah. Brilliant. Which was like was brilliant. like a real life documentary. Of course it? it was. We all thought it I thought it was pretty funny, but not funny enough. There was quite a lot of things they could have done. But th th that had grown enormously. What had shrunk underneath it was the number of good people actually doing the spade work, the donkey work, you know, mm. getting on with the job. And that's the sad part. I mean, when you think of the number of key top journalists, all people I've known so well, who've gone. I mean, it's really sad, isn't it? The Emily Maitlisses of this world. Yeah. So, so many others have Take departed. That tells Please don't you... swear in the studio. <laughs> oh, Love Emily. But it's, that tells you something about an organisation, yeah. very sadly, doesn't it? Losing key people like that. I mean, so I think... Um, it's a tough old time for them. Very tough old time. Very sorry for them. There you go. Uh, what do you think, Sajila? Do you pay, pay your licence fee with I pride or not? I don't want to pay it. Last year, I was so close like, to not ever paying it, like three months late, and then they sent me the red letter, and I was like, I'm not doing that. And I was, went on social media. What happened? Did, did Gary Glitter come round and knock on your door? No. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> why, did, well, come on, why not? Why not? Why didn't you want to pay? Because I was really angry that uh, the, you know, the, the BBC is not what it used to be, and I just wanted it to get back to where it was. And also, the licence fee is really dated. It's outdated. I'd be grudge should... paying the fee, it, I've got to it be is, it, isn't, it isn't, you know, I, I can't justify paying that anymore. No, I don't think and most it's, people it's would say that. So yeah. Tony, why yeah. don't you like paying it? I don't watch the BBC. Mm. I don't. I don't see a lot on there that I actually match of the day maybe, but that's a, right. you know. I, well, I, that's I, not worth 159 pounds. No, either, it's not. It? No, and there's a lot of people. You know, that's that's a lot of money to some people. You know, I know, I know the, mm. the over 75s yeah, get yeah. help. My mum gets help. You know, she doesn't have to pay. I get all that, but you know, I think we're sort of funding it, and I don't see we get it back. And then when you see people that are not working, you know, they're still getting paid, and that what happened to severance pay and cutting con contracts and that? You know, could that not happen? I don't well, know. Well, what's that, what's happened to the Beeb in your view? In, in over the years. How has it changed, do you think? The quality's just gone down. Mm. I think in terms of the programmes, in terms of the presenters, you know, you guys... Losing like, you know, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, the, the, the quality, he can't say it, I can say it for him, the quality's not there anymore. There you well, go. That's, I, I, yes, you, as you say, I, I, I would probably be bound to have a view uh, on all of that. Of um, but uh, seriously, do we, we want to lose the BBC in its current form? Do we really want to do it? I, 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 I'm willing to say straight away, it does too much. I'm sure it does too much. Mm. Commercial radio, for example, mm. which now has a majority of the audience, mm. that shows you the way that is going, I'm pretty sure. Uh, a couple of BBC TV channels uh, and a couple of radio channels probably would be enough. But Organisations are the same, whatever business you're in. They're always doing this, this and this until... until they go so, Gila, I'm going to throw Nicholas though in a bone, right? If yeah. you didn't have the Beeb, you'd be reliant on American media companies for content. It would be Netflix oh, no, and Disney Plus the all the way. No, I agree. I don't want the Beeb to go. I think no. it's, just, it's just not moved with the times. And it's just, yeah, it? and yeah. It, just needs, it just needs jiggy jigging yeah. to kind of... And you don't want today. the licence fee anymore. What do you want, I the don't subscription? Want the fee what do you fancy? I resent the licence fee, and I never used to do that before. Yeah. But, um, and I can afford it a bit more now. But would you pay your licence fee just for the news, a, new, a good news service? A good news service, yes. Mm. I would, I would. And I do think we're missing that, and I do think we've lost really key players in, Sheila, in the news. I know, you, I know you're trying to axe the BBC, but I've just had an email from the Director General who wants you to star in their latest <laughs> period, <laughs> period, no, period that, drama. No, that's the other reason. You're going to be Queen Victoria, <laughs> or they're renamed Queen Sajila. <laughs> yeah. A million quid a year. <laughs> a million quid Save a year. the oh, licence well, fee. Then I, I, well, look, like I said, cherry pick. But no, that's the other thing. They didn't commission any of my um, pictures, so, yeah. Uh, Tony, I'm going to be really naughty now. I know he's a mate of yours, but is Gary Lineker worth £1.3 million a year to present Match of the Day? No. No, I think it's a crazy amount of money, but I don't blame Gary. If they're offering it, you take it. And he's very, very good at his job, but it is a lot of money. That, you know, people that are paying what do, you think, what do you think is a reasonable amount to be paid for Match of the Day? Because if we're honest, people are tuning in mm. for the goals, aren't they? For the highlights. Yeah, and, and the, the punditry and yeah, the banter the, the as well, banter. I think. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I think, so what you know, do you think is a good good fee? Maybe sort of half a million? 400 yeah. grand? Yeah, I would say that's OK, it. my next question. Would you take the gig? Tony Cotty, would you take over as Match the Day presenter? Absolutely. Especially if I'm getting £1.3 million pound a year. Definitely oh, yeah. take it. Worth every penny. Well, we're paying him one2 tonight. <laughs> <for a start -up. laughs> but I think you'll agree, he's worth every penny. OK. Will you look at that? We've only been out of the EU for five minutes and they're inviting us back in. Those geniuses over in Brussels who were asleep at the wheel when Britain ultimately voted to leave in 2016 have folded yet again. During Brexit negotiations, they said that we couldn't have our cake and eat it and yet we now have tariff-free access to the European market. There was the rumoured £100 billion divorce bill. 
that never materialised. They said we would be chucked out of the collaborative Horizon Science project only for us to join at the end of last year. They said that the dreadful backstop, remember the backstop which worked against Northern Ireland, they said it couldn't be thrown out. It was gone in months. And now technocrats on the continent want to invite f young Brits to have freedom of movement in Europe. The so-called youth mobility scheme would allow young Brits aged 18 to 30 to go to Europe for up to four years to work, travel and study, and for their youngsters to do the same here. Well, that sounds like they want us back. So that's access to jobs and residency in Europe without paying huge monthly sums or following any rules. That's what I call having your cake and eating it. The UK is fast becoming Britain's friend with benefits, like an ex that's accepted that you've moved out, but is willing to have you back for a bit of hanky-panky when things are a bit quiet in the bedroom. <laughs> this flirtation is the best of both worlds for the Brits, and the Remainers, desperate to cast our departure from the block as a disaster, are absolutely screwed. Tony Cotty, they want us back. The EU is like a crazy ex-girlfriend that mm. won't let it go. Yeah. I'm not a lover of the EU, got to be honest. But, um, yeah, I, as I said, with Brexit, I, I've, in principle, I think it was a good idea. I just don't think it's been carried out in the right is way. Is it still better than where we were before we left? Would you take what we've got over Remain, Tony Cotty? Mm, no, because I, I think the, the gist of Brexit was immigration, wasn't it? You know, mm. And I think that was... The people were moaning. A lot of people, particularly the older generation, my mum's generation, they were moaning about the, the state of immigration. And I it's think gone that up was, since then. Yeah, exactly. So it's, something's gone drastically wrong, because what they voted for is not what they've been given. And you, the argument now is it's a lot worse than what it was in 2016. Mm. That, well, was a, that was a false needless. prospectus, yeah. wasn't it? Come yeah. on. Yeah. Brexit was never going to do anything about it. Nothing to do with immigration. It got, the two things got completely mixed up. Well, are you, in principle, you have control of your borders. We just haven't capitalised on that, yeah. have we? Yeah, well, I think that's right. Do you not Probably. think it was about immigration, then, Nicholas? I think, it, I think the I think public it thought it was about immigration, mm. and the politicians mm. made them think it was about immigration, but in the end, it wasn't. All it's... I'm, I'm sorry, this is GB News, I know, and I'm allowed to say it's things... It's a broad here. church, Nicholas. It's a broad it church, right. With some very weird priests in it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, priests, well, listen to this. I just think the whole thing was was a badly conceived idea. It's all very well to talk about, oh, some of them, you know, the, it, we haven't made the best advantage of what we were given and mm -hmm. so on. You ask people who are importing, trying to import goods. You ask people who try to send packages abroad, send something to their, you know, their auntie in Rimini or somewhere like that. You go to the post office and, I'm sorry, you've got to fill up this form, that form. That. That's the reality of what has happened. Isolating us from Europe has been a damn bad idea. Well, I, yeah, I yeah. beg to differ, yeah, Sajila, yeah. because I voted Remain, but I think there are many advantages to Brexit. It's an insurance policy against being in the euro, which Tony Blair tried to make happen before Gordon Brown came up with his seven tests that could never be fulfilled. Also, if you look at stopping the boats, you could never stop the boats if you were in the EU. The UK at the moment is considering leaving the ECHR. That would not be possible as a member state of the EU. Yeah, but so, actually, the Brexit benefits are better than people think. Yeah, I don't, I don't see them as benefits at all. I, I'm, I'm in a complete agreement with uh, Nicholas. I don't think, I don't see the benefits. I think it's been disastrous, and I think we need to accept that we were what misled. Has the we were misled. Been? So we, we've, had, we've had a shallower disaster. recession than Look, Germany and the we, eurozone. We couldn't stop the boats. We haven't stopped the boats. We're not going to stop. And the it would boats. be even harder if we were in the EU. It's, it's, it's hard now. No, the French right. have actually colluded with all the boats because it's like, oh, you know, we don't care. Let, let the boats go. They're probably watching Didn't realise there's so them, many pushing... Nigerians in France. <laughs> well, well, you. <laughs> got older, <laughs> older Mike Yarwood here. Uh, voice but I, 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 you know I'm a Ramoner. Well, I, I, I never moaned about it, though. <laughs> uh, but I'm just saying, and yes, we have got it, but we have done it. With By the way, what up. we need to do, look, I take your point, right? But let me ask you this. The EU is behaving like a crazy ex-girlfriend. I she agree with that. She doesn't get the memo. <laughs> we've left. We don't love you anymore. But, we've moved on. But I will take we've, that. We've met someone called Jacob Rees-Mogg, and we're very happy. <laughs> well, I think our young should go. And he's a great lover. But what happened to interrailing? You see, interrailing was... Caring we, lover. We, 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 you know, and that's what lovers do. They go interrailing. So, but I'm annoyed that it's only 30, so after 30, we can't do anything. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. Tony Cotty, I'm delighted to say the UK have rejected this flirtation from the EU, because I think is freedom of movement by the back door. And well done, Labour have also rejected it. Mm. But it speaks volumes that the EU are calling us back, don't you think? Yeah, and there's... They, other, they there's, need there's, us 
more than we need that. Absolutely. And there's other countries, I think, that are considering leaving the EU. You know, they've yeah. seen what's happened with us. I'm not saying it's right what's who, happened. Who do you over... think are going to leave then? I think there'd be other countries that would Poland. love to. Who, who do you think? Well, they're going to, there's lots of elections coming up uh, and we'll see what happens. What do you think? Who, who might leave? Poland, certainly. Well, uh, Poland, but we're talking about a country that is drifting, you know, to a right-wing place that I don't sure. think we would very much Necessarily uh, like. appreciate. Well, let, let's be clear. One of the things that happened with Britain leaving the European Union, we weakened that union itself as well considerably because we were a major player. I know it costs an awful lot of money and so on, but we were a major player. By coming away from it, we've made that block less successful mm. altogether. You tend to forget that. It's a two-way thing. Two-way thing. Well, darling, I know you want us back, but let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the relationship's over. <laughs> we've moved on. We've got Nigel. We've got Jacob. And we've got a few others as well. Is it wrong, coming up, is it wrong to speak ill of your exes? It's a brilliant story. You won't want to miss it. And why have the supermarket Iceland cancelled mums again? We'll debate all of that next on Friday Night Live. Britain's Newsroom. Weekday mornings from 9.30. men's mental health, yeah. men are starting to talk a lot more. Yeah. You've been through a lot of stuff that uh, people don't know about. Yeah, I mean, um, the last few years for me have been very, very difficult. Um, people, don't, people see me on tour, performing, making music, um, but um, myself and my wife, um, you know, we went through um, two miscarriages, oh, um, wow. you know, and, you know, for us, that was a very devastating mm, of time and very difficult to, to, to know how to kind of process those emotions. Mm. And I guess as a man, I, I did the thing of bottling up my emotions and where I feel comfortable to, to be able to express myself is in the studio. Whereas, you know, she had obviously a different reaction to, you know, what happened to us because not only was it happening to her mentally, psychologically, but it was happening to her physically as well. And I think what something that she really would wanted to see from me was that sensitivity and that emotion. And I thought that as a man being strong was trying to bottle up my emotions and just show her that, no, mm. you know, that I'm, I'm being strong for her. Mm. But actually being strong was, is talking about it. Mm. And what's happened ever since I've started to talk about it is I've spoken to more men that have experienced baby loss. My wife forced out of me, you know, how do you feel? And I end up as a mess on the floor. I was exasperating, crying, mm -hmm. almost inconsolable. She was just holding me in her arms um, as we cried together, and we cried together. Um, and I didn't realise I needed that release so badly. Like I said, I've been able to speak to other men, and, and, and we've been able to cry together, and they've, they shared their own experiences, which they did similar to me. But actually, you know, as men, I feel like that conversation and that sensitivity and being able to be mm -hmm. emotional together Join me, Camilla Tomini, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And why it matters to you. From your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. Good afternoon, Britain. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Stephen Dixon, and thanks for joining us on GB News, Britain's news channel. The biggest music star in the world, billionaire singer Taylor Swift, has released a new album in which she slags off a lot of her ex-boyfriends. With one ex, the 1975 frontman Matt Healy, receiving the worst of it. In one of the songs, she says, I would have died for his sins. Instead, I just died inside. You deserve prison, but you won't get time. And in this final zinger... She sings, you said normal girls were boring, but you were gone by the morning. 
Now, not exactly Oscar Wilde, <laughs> Bob Dylan or Cole Porter, I'll grant you. And while she is one of the most popular singers in the world and one of the most beautiful women on the planet, potential future boyfriends must be quaking in their boots. Forget to empty the dishwasher or remember her birthday and you'll be making up the contents of her next album. Be careful, lads. You could be swifted. In my opinion, you'd probably be better off with Britain's Got Talent superstar Susan Boyle. No stunner, I'll grant you, but she knows how to make a good Sunday dinner and she won't spill the beans in her next album when you do the dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gila Kershi, Tony Cotty and Nicholas Owen are with me. They are my Friday A-team. Uh, Tony Cotty, should you speak ill of your exes? Oh, um, it depends what's happened, Mark, doesn't it? You know, I mean, I, I, I thought most songs are written about exes and historic mm. events and what's gone on in your life. So, this, this should be a big deal about Taylor Swift writing about her ex-boyfriends. There's been quite a few British ones as well, weren't there? I and noticed, let me yeah. tell you, Susan Boyle is a very fine-looking woman in her own right, a very beautiful lady, a great mm. singer. I think she'd make a better spouse than Taylor Swift because she's not going to write lyrics about you yeah. in her next album. Oh, what you said, you're going to have the that. dinner on the table and everything. I think, yeah, yeah. I very think, homely, I, feel, I think. I, feel, I get the impression, you do know. Do you feel that Susan Boyle is old school? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, and Taylor's a, a modern lady and, mm. like you say, she's lovely-looking and everything, but she's entitled to write her songs and do what she wants. What, what would you say are the issues with the modern lady? Because I don't think that you get bang for your buck like you used to in, in the sort of Susan Boyle era. What do you think? <laughs> I, I don't so know did you say that, it, didn't he? did a bit of sex. Like, I don't know what, what you mean, but I do think that you write what you know. And hello, a fellow comedian, right? We write You know jokes. I'm joking. We write jokes about our exes. Exactly right. So that's even mm. worse, actually. Yeah, that's very true. You write yeah, whole yeah. stand-up routines about them. Uh, well, uh, but do you, think, do, you think, uh, do you think that she's wrong to write these words about ex-boyfriends? Because they could be quite offended and quite upset, couldn't they? Well, they shouldn't have treated her badly then, should they? Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I just, I, you should be able to laugh and joke about it. Yeah, I don't be. know. So this lady's, uh, you know, my, my knowledge is a little thin here, but she's an enormous star, worked enormously hard, got done done very, very well indeed. When has she had time for all these boyfriends? When, when does all that happen? She's got a lot of boyfriends. Yeah. She's has had she? a lot of boyfriends. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, they could only last about sort of five minutes or so yeah. before... Speak for yourself, I mean, Nicholas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? What? Now, popular <laughs> supermarket Iceland... <laughs> Careful. Uh, popular supermarket Iceland have cancelled mothers. Now, I don't mean, like, the NHS with birthing humans and chest feeders. The famous slogan, Mum's Gone to Iceland, has been ditched because the supermarket wants to convey a message that the shop is open to all. Absolutely. And let's be honest, Mum hasn't got time to go to Iceland now with the cost of living crisis. She's holding down two or three jobs. And thanks to inflation, even a trip to this low-cost outlet feels like a visit to Harrods. If Mum, whoever she is, had any sense, she'd go to Iceland, the country, not the supermarket. Lower prices, better quality of life, and the cod there isn't frozen. <laughs> so, Gila, <laughs> Mum's been cancelled by Iceland. Mum's been cancelled by Iceland. This happened before, Iceland. by the way. I, uh, sorry? This happened before in a previous campaign. Yes, it did, it did. But I, I don't understand why it always had to be Mum's gone to Iceland anyway. Why are the mums going shopping? Why aren't the men going shopping? Why aren't the kids going shopping if they're old enough? You know, it's like, why do mums have to do everything? In the old days, the mums were at home, though, Sir Gila. In the old days, I'm in talking... Days, yeah, look, home, yeah. Like and the man was going then. to work, and that was why yeah, mum's well, going to Iceland, you, wasn't it? You're you know? at home, then why are you buying frozen food? Cook food from fresh. Yeah, I agree yeah, with that. Yeah. I mean, you, sorry, yeah. Iceland. Is it cheaper, I frozen food? I don't know. If it's cheaper, then you might go there because it's cheaper. cheaper. I don't know. It, so. is, it is cheaper because yeah. it's frozen. Yeah. You, rem you and I remember the slogan? Yeah, absolutely. A million housewives every yeah. day pick up a tin of... Housewives, they don't hear that word no, anymore, no. do you? <laughs> Nicholas, yeah, when you said dear. a million housewives Gladys every Pratt. day, I know that you're a popular man <laughs> and a TV <laughs> legend. Indeed. But even that <laughs> figure impresses me, I've got to say. Uh, listen, thanks to my brilliant Friday A-team, Sajila Kershi, Tony Cotty and Nicholas Owen. We've got so much happening on Mark Dolan tonight, this weekend. Tomorrow, the Green Goddess, Diana Moran, the Hamiltons and Tom Bauer on Sunday, Anne Widdicombe and a Mark Dolan tonight exclusive story. Plus, on what would be her 98th birthday, we'll speak to Queen Elizabeth II's favourite photographer. That's a really busy weekend of Mark Dolan tonight, 9 to 11 tomorrow and Sunday. Ben Leo is looking after the 
chair for Patrick Christie's Looking Forward. Ben, what have you got? Yes, thank you, Mark. Great show. Uh, look, the Rwanda fiasco. I think it's a massive red herring. I think we should just turn back the boats back into Australia in the mid-2000s. It can be done safely. It's lawful. I'm going to get stuck into that at the top of the show. Also, the Canary Islands. They don't want us there. They hate the Brits. They want the tourism to go away. Is it time to boycott the Spanish and holiday at home? And also, even Nigel Farage reckons Winston Churchill couldn't save the Tories from oblivion. Tory MP Andrew Jenkins, she's with me very shortly. Brilliant stuff. Looking forward to Ben Leo from Nine. As I say, a busy weekend of Mark Dolan's night. See you tomorrow at Nine. Keep it GB News. Here's your weather. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Hi there and welcome to the latest update from the Met Office for GB News. Skies clearing overnight, most places fine as we start the weekend with high pressure in charge. That high pressure moving in from the west. Still a bit of a chilly breeze from the north, but as high pressure moves in, skies are going to clear, winds are going to ease and under lengthy clear skies and with light winds temperatures will fall away. A few mist and fog patches possible for the likes of Northern Ireland and some frosty conditions as we begin the weekend. So gardeners beware. Temperatures in urban areas three to five Celsius but as low as minus three for the likes of Northern Ireland, North West England and North Wales. Temperatures though through Saturday morning will quickly rise because of the widespread sunny skies and it stays sunny towards the south and the west for much of the afternoon. However, it tends to turn cloudier further north with some outbreaks of light rain moving into northern Scotland where it will be fairly chilly and we've still got that breeze down the North Sea coast making it feel on the cool side. Warm in the sunshine elsewhere and another sunny day to come for Northern Ireland, parts of southwest Scotland, West Wales and southwest England on Sunday. Bright skies also into the southeast. Elsewhere, increasingly low cloud and some patchy rain and drizzle for Northern England and eastern Scotland. Monday brings further cloudy skies for many with some patchy rain, but it stays relatively... Looks like things are heating up. Boxed boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. Don't miss your chance to win our biggest prize so far. There's an incredible £10,000 in tax-free cash to spend however you like. Plus, courtesy of Variety Cruises, a bespoke seven-night small boat cruise for two worth £10,000. With flights, meals, excursions and drinks included, your next holiday could be on us. Choose any one of their 2025 Greek adventures and find your home at sea. We'll also send you packing with these luxury travel Gifts. For another chance to win a prize worth over £20,000, text PRIZE to 63232. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB04 PO Box 8690 Derby DE19T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on the 26th of April. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if listening or watching on demand. Good luck. I'm Patrick Christie's. Every weeknight from nine, I bring you two hours of unmissable, explosive debate and headline-grabbing interviews. What impact has that had? We got death threats and the bomb threat and so on. Our job is to do what's in the best interest of our country. You made well, my I'm argument for me. My guests and I tackle the issues that really matter with a sharp take on every story. I'm hearing up and down the country that was a beginning, not an end. Patrick Christie's tonight from 9 p.m. only on GB News, Britain's news channel. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise and who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel.
GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Every Saturday, 10 till 12, we'll bring you all of the news that you need to know. We'll also remind you that there is so much to smile about. It's my favourite time of the week. I get to relax, enjoy some lighthearted stories, and let Ellie teach me about fashion too. <laughs> That's Saturday Morning Live, every Saturday, 10 till 12. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Isabel Webster. Thanks for joining us on GB.